I'm going to just use this EVC C unit, which comes off a D6435 engine, and I wanted to just show you a little bit. As if you remember, maybe not, everything along here is giving you a color code and it's giving you a letter designation and it actually spells out what it is. So for example, I know you can't see it that far away, X4 key switch, it's gray, and eh, colorblind, maybe it's blue. X7 controls, that looks blue to me. X2 data link, it goes down to the engine to the PCU. So that is the major connection that connects from the helm to the engine, but it goes to the PCU, not to the ECU, which is the engine control unit. So the PCU, again, is your middleman. That's where this connects to, and then the PCU connects to the HCU, all right? Your X3 AUX bus. This is the old generation system, and this is a J1587 connection. That connection doesn't really tell you what it's for, but when we go on the back of the display and we start looking for things, that is going to be for if you have a power trim panel, and you have a control panel, they'll tie together. If you don't have a power trim, you have an inboard engine, or if you have IPS, you won't have a power trim panel. So you'll just have the control panel. The control panel is where the aux bus comes in. That's what that's connected to. So that's the only one that really isn't totally explanatory. It doesn't make a lot of sense, all right? Your multi-link is for your displays. That's for, think of multi-link like multiple devices, including NEMA, other things like that. So your, any interface between electronics, navigation units, that's also tied into that multi-link harness, okay? And then if you have IPS, you have steering, or if you have joystick stern drive, you have electronic steering, and that's what plugs in here. If you have two engines, with electronic steering, and I have to use this one and this one. Obviously, you have to have two engines to have electronic steering. You're gonna have two cables that are coming from the steering helm, and it doesn't matter which side you plug them in. They'll go into either side. When you calibrate controls, it'll know which side's which on the steering wheel. It's more of a redundant system in the steering, so that each HCU and each drive line the steering system made the drives move in the same uh, manner. So the input from the steering wheel goes to both HCUs down to the PCUs, splits off, goes to the steering units, and it will make the drives track together. You get into joystick, that's where the joystick overrides, and that's where, when you move the joystick, that's where the drives can move independently, the engines can shift independently, the engines can throttle independently. That's the marvel of the software. Um, let's plug it in real quick, just to go over the back side of it. I'm just going to pull a couple of these cables up so you can see them, right? And your X4 key plugs right into the X4 connector. On that, you also have an auxiliary relay. So off of this harness, the auxiliary relay, you will remember this from class, you have pins 85 and 86 are, are taken here. All right, so that's automatically wired to the HCU. What you have to do if you want to add power to this system is you have to install on the back side of the relay plug pins 87 and 30. So you're going to have to run a separate power supply with its own fuse or breaker up to the relay. And then whatever you want to feed, stereo, fan at the helm, lights, whatever, you run pin 87 out to a fuse breaker panel and then you can feed fuse things. Again, you have to use the ABYC standards to get the power from the battery up to here and then out to the device, that's your full length. And then don't forget, you have to have a ground cable. So that ground cable has to go back. So remember the full run is the length of that cable on the positive side all the way up through the relay and all the way to the panel. And then you figure out where the gauge size is based on your impacity. This relay is turned on by a low side driver in the HCU. So there's always gonna be power when you turn the battery selector switch on the little red wire. That goes to pin 86, maybe pin 85. Depends on how the Swedes wire, because sometimes they do it backwards. Just a little humor, you know. Um, so where the low side driver turns the relay on. So when you turn the key on, this relay's energized. 
and then everything on the dashboard or at the helm station that you want would be energized. Your controls is blue, so that plugs into a connector on the back of here, all right? You have the other control, which is multi-link, and this is the one that's complicated. So I'm gonna pull these two out so you can see this. And this is where it gets the most confusing. Everything else is plug and play. So we have a TAC, we have an LCD, and we have two different cables. They are both plugged in here. The LCD, or if you have a multifunction display, you have an LCD display that's bigger, seven inch or so on, it may have its own separate harness that comes with it from the factory. So don't forget that, you need that cable. The multi-link extension harness for the sync cable is just basically a male male, just six pin harness. It's very different than an X2 data link harness. It has the same exact end as an X2 data link harness, but it has two separate can lines in it. The X2 data link only has a twisted wire pair. It only has one set of can lines in it. So you can't ever try to use this for this or this for this, okay? It's, you have to have the right cable. All right, now what I need to do is figure out how do I get this into that? And what I need is a Y split harness. And the Y split harness has a little secret to it. There are two ends on it. There's the male end, which is gonna plug into the node, the HCU, and then I'm gonna plug each device into here. Now, what if I had another device? What if I've got a NEMA backbone and I need to tie that into the system? I need another breakout harness or Y split harness. So these are called multi-link breakout Y split harnesses, all right? And the reason they're called the breakout is because you break out to another device. Here's the rule of thumb. Don't forget this. This will definitely be a test question. Most of the time that there are problems in an old system like this, and somebody's been behind the dash and done some wiring and unplugged things and plugged it back in, it's either something's left unplugged or something's plugged in the wrong place. And sometimes that's not easy to see, but I'll show you, it's real easy to figure out. If I look at this harness, it says multi-link and the other end says multi-link. And if you look at it, this connector's dark gray and this one's dark gray, male, female. But I also have this yellow harness that kind of drops out and it's called the multi-link breakout, it says right on it. The rule of thumb is anytime that you want to tie into the multi-link system, plug this into the node, you continue to the next multi-link. So it's always multi-link to multi-link. So what I'm going to do is just follow the color code. It'll show you in the installation post reader, but this is an easy thing to remember. You have to plug a multi-link into a multi-link like that. Now here's the other thing that could be a mistake. You plug it in and it sounds good, you know, everything's cool. Did you hear a click? You have to hear a click, right? That little click makes all the difference in the world. If you put it together and you think it's done, it's not. You have to physically click it. And if you don't hear that, then you don't have a good connection. And a lot of times under the dash, people are trying to get up in there and it's hard to get those to connect together. All right, so you absolutely have to make sure they're fully connected together. Anytime you're doing an inspection, you know, unplug it. What I always do first is I reach up and I grab the connectors in my hand and I give them a little pull. I wanna see if they're really connected because if somebody did something like this, right? They didn't plug it all the way in and they left it. Now you're called in and you go up there and you squeeze the button to pull it apart you don't realize it's unplugged. So the wiggle test, remember the wiggle test, the wiggle test is not grab the wire and wiggle it. The wiggle test is grab the connectors and lightly pull on them to see if they come apart. If they do, oh look, I probably found the problem. Make sure you write that down because that, you might be looking at multiple plug connections under the dash, but this is probably the cause. Second thing to do, flashlight. Look in there with a flashlight, look at the pins, look in here, make sure it's not gray, green, blue, whatever. You don't want corrosion there. The other thing you want to do, take the connector, tap it against your hand. Any water beads up, uh-oh, there's water in here. There's your problem too, okay? So I always check connections also for water if they're in a under the dashboard, looped, 
hanging, whatever. I want to see if there's water in there. Sometimes you can see it, but it'll heat up on your hand. Back to this. What if you make this mistake? What if accidentally you plug this into the node and then somebody accidentally did this? Okay, notice what happened. We went from a dark gray to a light gray to a dark gray to a dark gray. And this is dark gray and that's light gray. It doesn't even look right, but it happens all the time. Okay, so rule is you always have to plug in multi-link to multi-link, just like that. Okay, everything else has to be plugged in. Something has to be plugged into this, something has to be plugged into this, and something has to be plugged into this. You can't leave any of these open. If you leave them open, it breaks the chain of the can wires and the whole system just kind of goes to a shutdown system. The screens will light up, but there'll be no functionality, okay? So real quick, look under the dash, behind the dash, and see if anything's not plugged in, okay? So that's the rule of thumb on that. Not too complicated. Everything else, just plug and play on it, okay? So that's not too hard. It's, it's pretty straightforward.